So the next batch then of ergogenic aids we need to look at are physiological. So pharmacological, pharmacy, medicine, drugs. Physiological, physical. So these are physical ways of aiding performance. The first one we will look at is blood doping. So this was massive years ago. Massive. So if we look at the Lance Armstrong documentary in the 90s, this is what he was doing and didn't get caught doing until he admitted that he was doing it. So it is an illegal um, manual manipulation where a month before the competition, they would remove blood. So they would remove roughly about a litre of blood. They then spin the blood and separate plasma, white blood cells, red blood cells. They then take away the red blood cells and they freeze them. In the next following four to, um, three to four weeks, the athlete would be exercising and naturally what was taken out is replenished. So now, the week before the event, the athlete's got full amount of red blood cells. Before the event, usually around two hours before, the red blood cell that was in that freezer is now transfused back into the athlete. So now I've got excess red blood cells in the body. If I've got more red blood cells in the body, what's the benefit of that? I've got more oxygen. What does that remind you of? Yeah, yeah, increased VO2. So what, what, what pharmacological aid does that remind you of? E P O. E P O. Hook was for this then. E P O. Endurance increases, performance increases, O2 levels, or tra the O2 is transported, increase. Okay, we can use the same hook on this one because it's exactly the same sort of benefits. Benefits in my endurance athlete. It's going to increase the performance because I've got more oxygen being transported around the body. Some side effects though, very similar again to EPQ. Okay, I've got um, extra blood, pressure will increase, cardiac output decrease. Can use the same hook on this one. One thing I would be, the key term in this is this transfusion. The exam board like you use in it, okay? So it's not injected, it's transfused. Blood is transfused out and it's reinfused or it's retransfused back into the body a month later. You have to use that transfused word. And then a, a, a complication is that, well, the trans, the, when it get, does get transfused, there could be complications. Intermittent hypoxy training. So this is another physical way we can manipulate the body. Oh, sorry, so that last one as well, sorry. So blood doping is illegal. Intermittent hypoxy training is legal. You can do this. You are allowed to do it. 
Now, the key thing with this is intermittent hypoxia training is about wearing a mask. And the mask alters the PPO2 levels. So by wearing the mask, I can make it like I'm training at the highest mountain in Kenya without spending an absolute fortune having to go through acclimatisation in Kenya. Instead of climbing 1,000 feet every two weeks to make sure I acclimatise and don't get acclimatised sickness or um, I'm getting the correct adaptations, it will take a long time to do that. Well, I could just wear my mask. And the mask alter the PPO2 conditions. Now, if I'm doing this, this is what the altering, the, altering the conditions what we call the hypoxic conditions, okay? We're allowing less oxygen in. So we're wearing the mask to reduce the amount of oxygen coming into the body. So we're placing the body under greater stress. Now, by doing this, we're increasing um, our red blood cell production because we're trying to get more work, more um, red blood cells to increase our oxygen transportation. So this is now suited to an aerobic athlete. You've got to remember this one is legal. That be it. That's so intermittent hypoxy training, wearing a mask, altering oxygen levels. Putting the body under greater stress because there's less oxygen going in, therefore, I need to stop producing more red blood cells, trying to carry more oxygen. So, you're placing the body under greater stress, and that's going to benefit our aerobic athletes. So, when they take their mask off and they're competing, well, they should have the adaptations where they've got more red blood cells. So, now when they take in that first fresh breath with all this extra oxygen, they've got more red blood cells in the body. So, therefore, they can work harder. Right, the last physical way we can aid exercise and, put, and um, performance are cooling aids. And we can do these at three different times. We could do this pre, during, and post. Right, pre-event. So let's say you are going to run, very um, dramatic by now, but you're going to run the Sahara Desert Marathon. So a very, very hot marathon. You might wear an ice vest to start with. Why am I wearing the ice vest? What do I want it to do to my body? So I want to bring my core temperature down. So that is going to bring core temp down. So that's a benefit of it. It's going to bring my heart rate down. It's going to make me more relaxed. What does that do though? So when I take that off and I start running, what's that going to give me before I started the run? Am I going to feel how actual hot it is? So it gives me a false reading. It gives me a false interpretation of the environment. That could be quite serious for my body because it could, could lead me into shock. So we, the, the, um, the disadvantage of it is that it, it's false. It gives the body a false feeling of the environment.
during. You're feeling a bit hot. What might I give you? Yeah, an ice pack. I might give you an ice pack to put on, maybe on, on, on your neck, on your chest, on your back. Try and bring your, your temperature down. So an ice pack. Benefit of the ice pack, it does reduce redness and swelling. Disadvantage of the ice pack, does it last forever? So it's short. So disadvantage is that it's short-lived. Or, or it's... Um, Temporary solution. Love it. Brilliant way. It's, it's temporary. It's not long lasting. That's what I was after. Post. What do athletes get in after they've exercised? Ice baths. So an ice bath. A bath full of ice. Why? Reduce blood flow. Link to reduce blood flow. What am I hoping to happen? What is revastibution? So what's the one of the V's in there? Okay, yes. When, so what, so I finished my exercising, I'm boiling hot. I've got blood in my muscle, which is all the nasty toxins. I've got lots of buildup of carbon dioxide and I've got lactic acid all built up in the muscle. The muscle is vasodilated at this point, yes, because I'm hot. I jump in the ice bath, it vasoconstricts. So everything that was in that area is, is, is then forced out. So all that badness is forced out of the muscle. Because jumping in the ice bath, it, every, all your organs would dilate and your muscles would constrict. Right, I now get out of the bath. What happened to my muscle? Is it colder or hotter when I get out of the bath? Hotter, so what happens to the muscle? It dilates. So when I get out of the bath, we get vasodilation. So I'm now getting new, fresh blood full of oxygen and nutrients swarming into that blood, into that muscle. Therefore, aiding recovery. So this would reduce DOMS. What's DOMS? Delayed onset muscle soreness. Because we've got rid of all that lactic acid, all that carbon dioxide. What can you get though from ice? You can get water, correct. But what can it do to you if you put it on your skin? Burns, ice burns. So the disadvantage is it can lead to ice burns. Okay, what we don't want is you getting out of that bath and all of a sudden you've got like high degree level burns all over your body because the ice has stuck to you, it's been too cold. Great.